Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 11 of Blue Leadership with your host, Dennis Sinair. Dennis is a 26-year law enforcement veteran and a retired chief from the state of New York. He's also a proud graduate of the 240th session of the FBI National Academy and the 61st session of the FBI LIDA Command Institute. The Blue Leadership video podcast is brought to you by the nationally ranked Master of Science in Law Enforcement and Public Safety Leadership Program at the University of San Diego. Um, you can learn more about the LEPSL program at criminaljustice.sandiego.edu. And with that, I will kick things over to your host to introduce our featured guest. Thank you, everyone. Kylie, thank you. And it's great to be back. We took off um, the month of January, but now we're back in full swing. And today uh, we have Chief Mickey Williams, uh, the Chief of Police for the City of Carlsbad, California, as our guest. And, uh, and Mickey, thanks for being here. We're glad to have you. You bet. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, a little background here. Um, Chief Williams is a 27-year law enforcement veteran. Um, he's come up through the ranks, held positions in all capacities within his agency. Um, when he became the chief in 2021, he um, brought in a new model of policing, really reflective of the principles of 21st century policing, and a lot of that geared toward building legitimacy and trust and, you know, training centric and technologies and, and lots of other things that we're going to cover here. Um, educationally, um, you're not going to find people with better credentials. Chief Williams has a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's in public administration, and he also has a Juris Doctorate degree. Um, so with all that, um, I think this is going to be a great podcast. Um, so Mickey, let me, let me kick it right off. Uh, okay. The first question, so you're now eight months into your tenure as chief. How's it going so far? Has there been any anything um, that's been a challenge or has it, the transition gone pretty well? Um, well, just like with any transition, there's always, you know, little things. But um, first off, the the amount of work that the former chief, Chief Gallucci, did to try to help me be successful. Um, I can't thank him enough. He 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 really did a lot to try to make sure that there was a successful uh, handoff and that the department um, just took off um, once I got you know, in the, the chief seat. So um, I can't thank him enough. And I think, you know, for all of us, the concepts of succession planning and um, do, you know, putting in the hard work to try to make sure that the people that work with us and, and sometimes for us are exposed to things to gain them the comfort level for the next level. I, having lived it, uh, I can't thank uh, Chief Gucci enough for that. Um, you know, I think no matter what assignment you get, the first couple of, you know, the first little bit in it is a little bit of a, it takes a minute to get your arms around and just to really understand it. I remember the first time I got um, promoted to, um, property crimes detective, um, back when that happened, I remember being overwhelmed at that point, just thinking, man, all these cases and that sort of thing. And I think with along every step of the way, there is that adjustment period when you take on the new role and the new assignment and the chief's job is no different, but at the same time, it's really no different. It it's, we're doing police work. We're here to provide service. Um, we're all, we're all working together to make that happen. Um, so, uh, in some ways, you know, it is a bit of an adjustment, but in the others, it's just like the other adjustments and, and you quickly get acclimated and you work hard. And, um, that, I think that leads me to one other piece of this is the, the quality of people that we have here at Carlsbad PD to help support and make us successful is something else. We've had, a, we've had a lot of retirements. Uh, we've had a lot of movement but we constantly have people that are just ready and willing to take on that next level of responsibility um, to do what's right for the community and, and what's right for our department. So um, overall, it's been a great, a great process. It, it's been um, enjoyable and uh, I'm, I'm learning every day. And, um, and I think we're, we're doing a good job of, of serving the community and, and taking care of them. So. That's, that's awesome. And, and kudos to your predecessor that he truly understood the value of succession planning because really every leader, you know, hopefully the, the viewers and listeners, you know, are thinking of who they can or already have a person in, that they know that they're mentoring because really everyone's goal in the leadership position is to get the person below them capable of doing their job, um, whether it's to, to step in 
temporarily or to take the helm. And um, that's awesome that your prior chief did exactly that. Yeah, I could, he did a really, really good favor for our police department in, in how he set up uh, the opportunity for people to be exposed to different things. And I've learned from that. Yeah. And, and so now you're extremely accomplished. And, you know, when I was giving your credentials, I you're also a graduate of the FBI's National Academy, Session 261. And with that, your role as chief and all the roles you've had before that, you've still found the time to make education a priority. You got your bachelor's degree, you got your master's in public administration and your Juris Doctorate, your law degree. Um, how did you find the time to balance all of that? And what was your motivation for always achieving higher education? Um, well, I've been so fortunate here at the city of Carlsbad, education forever, uh, for as long as I've been here, has been really uh, held highly in high regard. Um, both between the commitment of our city and our department to provide the opportunities for people to get educated. And then also the reward. Uh, it is something that is, is highly um, revered as far as uh, our department when we make decisions. And, um, you know, it, there's a there's a part of it is a personal sacrifice uh, for anybody that's gone back to school while trying to work in law enforcement. It, it, it's a challenge because we have challenging jobs that are not always predictable uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so there is that personal challenge that, like I said, anyone that's that's gone to school while working in law enforcement can relate to. Um, there's also, uh, you know, the, the family side of it and the commitment and the sense of teamwork it takes uh, for uh, spouses and loved ones to support uh, law enforcement personnel to, to go through the educational process. Um, and so I have to say a big thanks to my family for that, because they definitely um, they did everything they could possibly do to help me uh, try to be successful. And I thank them for that. Um, and then also, I think like when we, we talk about education and, and the sacrifice and the motivation behind it, um, I think the, the need, there's such a need for our, our law enforcement leadership to respect the value of education and also be willing to from organizational perspectives to um, accept some of the, the initially it's a, it's a bit of a, a burden because you have people that maybe aren't quite as accessible as they could have been, or, um, you know, may have uh, a lot on their plate because they're also trying to, to get educated while doing their jobs. Uh, but I think that the, the long-term payoff of, of investing in education, both personally and organizationally, it pays off tenfold uh, in the long run. And so, you know, when we talk about motivation, I think, you know, having law enforcement leaders that are trying to make themselves better and to try to trying to learn and trying to uh, stay on top of the ever changing laws and policies and expectations and community concerns, I think is 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 time well spent. And um, and that's kind of what drove me to 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 take on the challenge. Yeah, and I completely agree. And I think, well, one, it shows you obviously have a, a very um, growth oriented mindset. And, and that's key because in this profession, like you said, it's constantly evolving, probably more than any other profession. The laws are changing, the technologies are changing, the expectations are changing. And I think the mindset of higher education just creates that continued curiosity and desire and willingness to learn and, and that critical thinking. Yeah. Um, the, those I'm sure you'll attest as a chief, they play a role in your everyday operations. Absolutely. I think when you when you think about education, some may say that, you know, being formally educated uh, doesn't necessarily make you a better police officer. And in some aspects, I think there's some truth to that. Um, some of what makes a, a good police officer is is the common sense and, and some of those things that are just just within people. But I think the, the real value of, of formal education as it relates to law enforcement services is almost uh, I kind of would draw an analogy to sports. And so if you're if you're playing a game, say basketball and you practice all the time, when you get into the game, the game is slower for you than uh, for people that aren't constantly practicing. And um, when the game seems slower to you because of your experience in your training, and it allows you to see opportunity and make better decisions 
and to to set up the next step better because you, you, the pace of the game is comfortable to you. And I think that formal education is, has that same effect for law enforcement leadership. I think the more education you get, the more you're able to see per different perspectives, you're able to assimilate facts and, and changing circumstances. And the game is a little bit slower. You're able to, you're able to set up the next position uh, with today's facts. And I think, um, I, th I think that's where there's a, a real significant value in law enforcement leadership, gaining formal additional formal education, because I think it, it's analogy, but it slows the game down for you when you're trying to conduct business and um, and make important decisions that affect, you know, your community and your department, um, your relationship with the community and all those type of things. So I think that's one of the one of the major advantages, I think, to, to formal education for law enforcement leaders. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, let's give a plug to the Lepsel to the Lepsel program in that, so I was a student in the program at the same time I was a police chief and I was, while we were trying to manage the pandemic and months and months of civil unrest and spikes in crime and an inability to recruit and contain and, and retain officers. And, um, and I will say the education allowed me to put empirical evidence to my request for, for budgetary items. It allowed me to um, have a better understanding of some of the legal challenges that are coming and and also expose me like you said to police executives from across the country to know that one the challenges i had weren't unique and but i learned other methods of of addressing them from from my colleagues in the class um so yeah everything you said and and one of the other things i think i, I have to share this we had a discussion board in one of the classes I'm, that i'm teaching currently and one of the students indicated that how much the student is valuing the education as they're going through the process, but others who have not gone on to higher education say, well, that's just a waste of time and money. And um, the response to that, I, I think, goes cr directly to this conversation is it's never a waste because one, you're bringing all those skills that you just talked about into the situation. And two, you as a chief, if you're looking at promoting or hiring and you're looking at the person's resume, and with all things being equal, you're going to put more weight on the person who has that advanced education because you know they've persevered and they have a growth-oriented mindset and they're exposed to other people. Is that true for you? Absolutely. And I think the the my first exposure to the Lepsel program was we've had many of our uh, team members here at the PD go through the program. And as they would go through it, they'd have assign different assignments and some may come and ask, you know, what my perspective on something was because it was something that they were studying. I and mean, as we had those discussions, I thought, man, this, I wasn't exactly sure at that point what Lepsel was all about, but I knew this is really, really relevant stuff. This is the, the discussions that the employees were, were coming to, to talk to me about were issues that we were actually dealing with in our day-to-day -day basis or, or day-to-day -day operations. And I found that to be just fantastic because it wasn't just the the opportunity to, to gain the formal education, but it is that opportunity along with uh, it being so actually relevant uh, to what we do day in, day out in law enforcement leadership and, and trying to guide organizations and or parts of organizations um, to do the work we do. So I found that to be fantastic. And, and I agree with you. I think the, uh, you know, for selection and those type of things, uh, education, definitely uh, comes into play. But the way I think it comes into play the most is that when um, in people's day-to-day -day performance in their jobs, and then also through testing process and those type of things, they just, those that have invested in their themselves and have gone out and done the work uh, to to get the education, they shine and, and they, they separate um, frequently. And so, um, I think I think it it helps in a lot of different ways like that. Yeah, and I, I, I've seen it exactly the same way. And um, this brings me to my next question: Is your agency has always been a most, a lot of agencies can boast about being training centric, which is which is awesome and very important. But yours can also boast about being very educational centric. And and there's a lot of students that are in this program and have graduated who are 
members of the city of Carlsbad PD. Can you just share with the listeners and viewers what that um, emphasis of education has had on your department and in what ways has it shown itself in an aggregate sense? Sure. So for the city of Carlsbad, it's, it starts with the city. Um, from when I first started here 27 years ago, the city has always invested in formal education. Our tuition reimbursement, I think, is second to none, uh, which provides every employee that works here the opportunity to go get the education that they desire. Um, so you have that. You also have the dedication to the the education and then the training within the department. Um, our, our city has uh, invested in a state of the art training facility that for an agency our size to have um, right across the street from our station is just an opportunity that's also second to none. So it, it starts off with the city leadership that we've had for a long time, and it's translated into our department. Uh, when people get hired uh, into our department, one of the discussion points is formal education, where they stand, what their desires and aspiration is as it relates to formal education. Um, and that that also is something that's continued through all of our evaluation processes, um, through our selection processes. It, it's a part of the conversation within our department. It doesn't dictate everything, but it is a part of everything. And um, and I think over the years and over the decades, it has just paid um, real dividends for our community um, because at the end of the day, we're fielding police officers that have the ability to see big picture, to have the opportunity or the ability to see different perspectives from issue of issues that help them either negotiate or solve problems. And, and it's just, it, 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 the advantages of that investment over the last several numerous decades of within our city and within our police department is realized every day by how our officers are able to go out and solve the community problems. Um, yeah, yeah, and that that critical thinking skills that is just um, incorporated into a person's thinking once they endeavor toward higher education. There's no way it won't transition into them applying it daily as they go about responding to calls for service or investigating crimes, or or if they're administrators, you know how they're going to run their department. Absolutely. Um, so, with all the things I mentioned, obviously, um, it would seem that there's not another minute no less hour in your week, yet you are now also a faculty member of the LEPSL program. And for the viewers and listeners, for anyone who may not know the Law Enforcement and Public Safety Leadership Master's program here at the University of San Diego, um, one, what motivated you to um, now want to take on that new role of being a, a faculty member? Well, it, it went back to my initial exposure to the program and the 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 people within our department that were going through it. And, and like I talked about the relevancy of the topics and um, the discussions that were taking place. And then also I saw, as I started paying attention, I, saw, I started noticing the law enforcement community. It's a, it's a leadership community almost that's being developed by LEPSL. I almost think of it as like um, if in California, we have SLI, which is a leadership institute that um, most sergeants within our state go to, and it almost has a language of its own and uh, and creates bonds um, throughout the state. And I I'm starting to see that uh, develop with LEPSL across the country. It's the, as, as more and more leaders within law enforcement go through this uh, program and have the discussions and work through the, the real life problems and situations and challenges that law enforcement is facing, it's creating a community in the country um, that I wanted to be a part of. And I feel so fortunate to have been uh, offered the opportunity to be a part of it. You know, I'm just I'm just at the beginning phases of of um, getting into the program as an instructor. But just the just the onboarding and the and the training that I've received and the mentorship I've received um, through that process has been remarkable. And and it's not a surprise because you can see it throughout the program. There's that there's that desire to to help each other be better law enforcement leaders so that law enforcement serves the communities better. Um, and that there's just such a consistent theme from the top down on that, that when I got the opportunity or was presented that there may have been an opportunity to be a part of it, I didn't have to think more than a second. It was the same, you know, for me as a, as a faculty member, 
the exact same answer as what I would have given that you just said if, if I was asked. Um, for all the things you said, it's it's so much bigger than us. It's such a, um, a nationally ranked program. And um, it's just it's something that's just continued to grow and to be part of something so important for a profession that truly is at a pivotal point. Um, yeah. I could not agree more with the value of being part of it. Um, yeah. So what I'd like to ask, and I think I know the answer, but so how has academics helped you specifically? And we talked generically about, you know, critical thinking and, and uh, ability to relate and look at different perspectives. But for you as a chief in a, in a busy agency and a very contemporary agency that's forward thinking, how has your academics helped you to be a better leader? Uh, yeah, I'll give you just a couple examples. Like um, when I went through my MPA program at San Diego State, um, I remember I took a course on planning, city planning, uh, which for a police officer isn't that big of a deal. You know, it's not what we do every day. But there were some of the topics that were discussed, like the layouts of how they design parking lots. Now, this is a very unique like example. But once I took that course, my interactions with other departments that do that type of work just seemed so much easier for me to understand and to be helpful with. And, um, and, and I know it's because of the exposure that I received through that course, because I was able to make connections that I would not have otherwise have made. That's one example. I think also, uh, for, personally, the opportunity to have gone through a uh, law school, um, somebody, when I was considering going through it, uh, who, who already had gone through law school, they said, you know, um, I don't know exactly what I learned, but they said, uh, I didn't know how to fix my car before I went through law school. And now I can fix my car because I think differently. And I thought that's a, that's a different, that's strange. But, um, but after going through it, I kind of get it because, um, you know, I don't do the work of a lawyer every day, but what I do do is try to address complex issues. And what it taught me how to do is to peel back carefully layer by layer, the concerns and the issues and the perspectives that go into the challenge that we're dealing with and um, looking at motivations and limitations and just all those things that affect the interactions that, that cause issues for law enforcement uh, or challenges for law enforcement. And so that, that training has been, I use it every day. Um, and it's, it's not, it's not the typical lawyer type um, use, but uh, it, I have found it to be really, really helpful for me um, in breaking down and trying to come up with solutions to, to challenges that we're dealing with. Yeah, that makes total sense. And, and really, when things come to your desk, you know, there's nearly not any uh, ground balls or easy issues come to you, because if they were easy, they would have been usually addressed or solved levels below you. So to be able to apply that type of thinking and, and, and careful methodology so that whatever solution you're putting into place isn't going to have unintended consequences and isn't failing to look at, you know, a certain nuance that is an important nuance. So I think right. that's an awesome um, example of the benefits of that higher education. Yeah. You know, so this is a this is a key question. I've always been a, a firm believer that national standards are so important because if someone has an interaction with an officer or an agency, that is their image of what policing is, especially if they don't, if not someone who frequently has any police interactions. And then you can look at someone with your qualifications and your agency's um, approach to policing, and that's at the, the top of the echelon. And then there's others that have the title of officer or chief, and they don't have any sort of approach that's um, geared toward legitimacy and trust or, or really going beyond the basics. And what do you think we need to do to get buy-in so that there are national standards for every level, for entry-level officers, promotional, all the way up through chief, so that the communities across the country see the very best of what policing is? And there's 99 I'll say 0.9% of police do a really, really good job. But because there isn't those national standards, those bad examples get the press and, and make the media. And that's what people see as policing. So how do we move toward national standards at all levels? I think that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, 
I think I'm going to break break down the way I approach this into a couple of different pieces. First off, I think without a doubt, we need to acknowledge that our in law enforcement, the way we are seen is very heavily influenced nationally. Um, this is a national issue. Uh, when we see issues that happen within certain cities or even small little towns, um, they have an effect across the country, significant effects across the country and our ability to have uh, relationships with our communities. So um, I think the acknowledgement that this is a count, uh, this is a, na a nationwide issue, you're right on the mark. So now I think moving on. So now, now what do we do about it? If this is a national issue, what do we do about it? There's a couple of things that I think we need to keep an eye on. One, um, we need to continue to attract good people that want to serve our communities. We need to continue to attract them to this line of work. Uh, and so to do that, um, some of the, the propositions, though, I think are really well intended um, that I've heard uh, raising the bar on uh, formal education to get into law enforcement, uh, potentially requiring bachelor's degrees or those, those type of things. I'm a little bit concerned about that because I think we need to cast a wide net to get really good people into this business. Um, and um, I think, so I think setting the bars uh, for entry level um, very high, I think we're potentially limiting people that have had the opportunities. For example, if we're requiring bachelor's degree for entry level, there's many very good people that have a heart to serve that um, maybe just haven't had the opportunity to go to school yet. Um, so uh, so I think we need to, from the entry level perspective, we need to cast a wide net to hire good people that want to serve. But I think there's a huge opportunity um, with the governmental agencies and the cities and the counties and the states that have law enforcement organizations with them to come up with um, uh, opportunities to raise the bar on our professionalism, on our expectations, um, and that sort of thing. And I think education is part of that. But I think that the the place to lay that is at the um, organizational level, not on the individual level coming into the organization or um, uh, that sort of thing. And I think, you know, there's some opportunities, uh, you know, there's nation federal funding for different types of law enforcement initiatives. Um, maybe maybe what you described could be a topic for a, a funding program uh, nationally um, to, to provide local uh, and state and county law enforcement agencies opportunities to grow in these areas that, that are gonna translate into a more professional um, law enforcement service. So, I agree with you 100%. It's a national issue. And I uh, and I think that at the organizational levels, there's a lot we could do to raise that across the country to raise, raise our level of service. But um, I do think that we need to be a bit cautious uh, at the entry level because I don't want to I don't want to shut the door on a really good person that wants to serve just because maybe they haven't had the opportunity to pursue a bachelor's degree or whatever the um, the obviously we have to have minimum standards, but uh, raising the minimum standards to me is a little bit um, concerning just because I think we might be keeping people from being in the business that should be in the business. Yeah, completely agree with that entry level with making education the, the barometer. Um, I think when you look at entry level, making that every officer has to go through a psychological evaluation and suitability ranking from a qualified professional. And it's really the character because everything, you know, as you describe it, serving the community, you have to make sure that we bring in the right people, that their motivations are pure, and that then you can offer those incentives and those educational um, um, pathways for them. But getting the right people to begin with just, I think, is just really the character and suitability and then, like you said, once they're in, invest in that at the organizational level so that education is a, pri a priority and is something that's looked upon favorably. And um, I think to me, that's going to be one of the key ingredients toward um, success in the, the way law enforcement across this country is viewed. Yeah, I think one of the things that you just mentioned kind of put tied together the commitment that 
our city and here in Carlsbad has had towards like providing uh, tuition reimbursement and education opportunities to everyone that works here. Um, I, I wonder, just I'm wondering what the potential could be if across the country that were if that model was offered to all law enforcement, you know, any any cop that that wants to go improve themselves and um, and take on higher education or uh, training opportunities, if those were availed to them and there was funding to provide that, I wonder what impact that would have across our country as far as improving the professionalism, which then relates uh, directly to uh, uh, the relationship we have with our community and the trust that they have in us. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and it would draw in at that recruitment level, someone who says, I want to be part of this agency, not only to serve and because I love whatever this community, the community that they're applying toward, but because they want to better themselves with education that's offered within. Right. That's exactly who we want bringing in, bringing in to the organization to go out and, and do the work we do. Yeah, for sure. What a what a great way to close things. Uh, any final thoughts, Chief, of just for the listeners and viewers, if anyone's listening or they know someone who's in a law enforcement position that is thinking about going on to pursue their education and and here we are talking about the Lepsil program, what final thoughts would you offer? Um I would say just like with any self-improvement challenge, there's never the perfect time to, to take on a, a new challenge for yourself. I would just encourage people to, to flip the switch and go for it because uh, a couple of things. One, uh, there is no perfect time. It's always a sacrifice, but it's doable. And secondly, um, sometimes I've seen uh, people be held back by fear of failing um, that maybe they're not, they're not sure that they can do it or, um, and quite honestly, I felt that way about going to law school. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get through it or not. And, and a, a twinge within me felt a bit, you know, boy, if this doesn't work, it might be a little bit embarrassing, but at the same time, that's the only way to improve myself was to, to take the risk and see how it went and put everything I had into it. And I would say, I would recommend that to anybody, uh, in law enforcement or that's considering about, um, taking the next step to improve themselves is go for it, get, do it work your butt off and it's going to pay off. What a perfect ending. And I know Kylie is going to come in and close us out and, and hopefully um, people who are listening, if they know someone um, kind of urge them to go take a look at Lepsil and, and, you know, this is the program of programs. So I think um, they won't be dis dissatisfied at all. Great. Yeah, thank you both so much for your time today. And thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to meet the law enforcement heroes um, and leaders who are part of the MS Lepsel family. If you'd like to watch previous episodes of Blue Leadership, you can find them on the video tab of our Facebook page or by searching USD Blue Leadership on um, YouTube. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you all next time.